Crime Scene, The Times Square Killer is a 2021 American limited docu-series made for Netflix and directed by Joe Berlinger. It is the second installment in the Crime Story documentary series, following Crime Scene, The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel. Its story focuses on the series of 1970s to 1980s murders that were carried out by American serial killer Richard Cottingham, also known as the Times Square Killer and the Torso Killer. The series was released on December 29, 2021. Early Life and Education Cottingham was born on November 25, 1946, in Mott Haven, Bronx, New York City the first of four children. In 1948, his family moved to Dumont, New Jersey, and in 1956, to Rivervale, New Jersey. In 1964, Cottingham graduated from Pascack Valley High School in Hillsdale, New Jersey. Career In 1964, after graduating from high school, Cottingham worked for Metropolitan Life where his father was a vice president, at the firm's headquarters office on Madison Avenue in New York City. He started in the mailroom and eventually became a mainframe computer operator after taking computer courses. In October 1966 he became a computer operator for Blue Cross Blue Shield Association in New York, until his 1980 arrest. At Blue Cross, Cottingham worked in an office with fugitive serial killer Rodney Alcala, the dating game killer, who was living in New York in 1969 under the alias John Berger, neither man has claimed to have been aware of the other, nor is there any evidence they were familiar with one another prior to either's arrest. Marriage On May 3, 1970, Cottingham was married at Our Lady of Lords Church in Queens Village, New York. He and his wife had three children, two boys, and a girl. In April 1978 his wife filed for divorce on the grounds of abandonment and mental cruelty. His wife withdrew the petition upon his arrest in May 1980, until after he was tried and convicted in the first trial in New Jersey, then refiled the petition and completed the divorce proceeding. First Arrest and Subsequent Lesser Offenses Cottingham was arrested on several lesser charges throughout his killing spree, the police were not aware of his murders at the time, nor were they aware there was an active serial killer at large in the New York, New Jersey area. On October 3, 1969, Cottingham was charged and convicted of drunk driving in New York City, and sentenced to a $50 fine. On August 21, 1972, Cottingham was charged and convicted of shoplifting at Stern's department store in Paramus, New Jersey, and was sentenced to pay a $50 fine or 10 days in jail. He paid the fine. On September 4, 1973, Cottingham was arrested in New York City for robbery, sodomy, and sex abuse on the complaint of a sex worker and her pimp, neither complainant appeared in further proceedings, however, and the case was dismissed. On March 12, 1974, Cottingham was arrested in New York City for robbery and unlawful imprisonment on a complaint of a sex worker. Once again, the victim did not appear in further proceedings, and the case was dismissed. Murders Cottingham committed his first known murder when he was 20 years old. On October 28, 1967, he strangled Nancy Skiava Vogel a 29-year-old married mother of two. Her nude body, hands bound in front of her, was found under a blanket behind the passenger seat of her car parked in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. She had last been seen three days earlier, when she left home stating she was going to play bingo with friends at a local church. The murder remained unsolved until Cottingham confessed and pleaded guilty to it in August 2010. On February 15, 1968, Cottingham killed his second known victim. 23-year-old Diane Cusick was found raped, beaten, and strangled to death in the back seat of her car, which was found parked near the Green Acres Mall in Valley Stream, 
New York. Cottingham was not charged with this murder until June of 2022, when he was linked to Q6 murder by DNA. Starting in 2014, Cottingham confidentially admitted to Detective Robert Anzilotti of the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office, New Jersey, the murders of three teenage females in 1968 and 1969. Jacqueline Harp, 13, July 17, 1968 who was randomly ambushed by Cottingham as she walked home in the evening from school band practice in Midland Park, New Jersey, and strangled with the leather strap of her bag, Irene Blase, 18, who vanished on April 7, 1969, in Hackensack, New Jersey, and was found face down in four feet of water in Saddle River, strangled with a wire, a cord, or perhaps the chain of a crucifix she was wearing. Denise Velasca, 15, abducted July 14, 1969, in Emerson, New Jersey. While walking to a friend's home and found the next morning in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, by the side of a road next to a cemetery, strangled with a cord or the chain of her crucifix. The Bergen County Prosecutor's Office exceptionally closed the three cold case murders, but for several years kept this secret from the public except for the victim's family members. In December 2019, forensic historian and author Peter Vronsky, on the eve of publishing the revelation in his second edition of Serial Killers, The Method and Madness of Monsters, made it public, with BCPO cooperation, in a community meeting in Midland Park, the site of Jacqueline Harp's murder. Anzilotti and BCPO subsequently confirmed the exceptional closures of the three schoolgirl murders from 1968 to 1969. In April 2021, Cottingham confessed to the unsolved August 9, 1974, double abduction, rape, and forcible drowning murders of teenagers Lorraine Marie Kelly, 16, and Mary Ann Pryor, 17, in Montvale, New Jersey one of New Jersey's most notorious cold cases. The confession was extracted by Chief of Detectives Robert Anzilotti weeks before his retirement and was facilitated by the work of forensic historian Peter Vronsky and a Cottingham victim family member, Jennifer Weiss, the daughter of Dede Gudartsi, one of the New York torso killing victims. Vronsky and Weiss had been meeting with Cottingham in prison since the spring of 2017 counseling him to make the confession. Anzilotti had spent 15 years interviewing Cottingham, working toward the confession, which raised the total number of victims attributed to Cottingham to 11 at that time. He claims to have committed between 85 and 100 murders. Cottingham was tried for the subsequent five murders from 1977 to 1980 in a series of three trials, two in New Jersey and one in New York. On December 15, 1977, the body of X-ray technician Marianne Carr, 26, was found brutally beaten and strangled in the parking lot of the Quality Inn Motel in Hasbrook Heights, but police did not link the murder to Cottingham until after his arrest. Carr had marks around her wrists and ankles, indicative of handcuffs, and traces of adhesive tape around her mouth. Her body also bore numerous small cuts and bite marks. She had been abducted from a little ferry apartment complex where Cottingham had previously lived with his wife and where he would later leave an unconscious victim who survived. On December 2, 1979, firemen in New York responded to an alarm at the Travel Inn Motel near Times Square. Inside they found the bodies of Dede Gudartsi and another unidentified woman. Both bodies had their hands and heads removed, and had been doused with lighter fluid and set on fire. The missing body parts were never found. As Cottingham was fleeing the scene of the Torso murders, he briefly encountered the 23-year-old Peter Vronsky, who was attempting to check into the travel and while in New York on a film production assignment. The brief encounter inspired Vronsky to later write his serial killer histories and paved the way for his prison meetings with Cottingham some 40 years later. In 2009, in an interview, 
Cottingham admitted to the murders and claimed that he severed the heads and hands of the victims to prevent their identification, as he was acquainted with one of them Dede Gudartsi and had been seen with her in a bar the night before. On May 5, 1980, police found the body of 19-year-old Valerie Ann Street in Equality Inn in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. The victim's hands were tightly handcuffed behind her back and police would later lift a fingerprint matching Cottingham the only fingerprint successfully found from any of his known murders. Street had been bruised and beaten around her head and body and bitten on the breast, and had traces of adhesive tape on her lips. Numerous shallow cuts were found on her breasts as well, indicative of torture. Street had died of asphyxiation. This murder was later linked to the earlier murder of Marianne Carr, who was left in the same motel's parking lot on May 15. Jean Rayner was strangled and her throat cut in the historic Seville Hotel. Cottingham severed the victim's breasts and posed them on the headboard of the bed, and set fire to the mattress under her body before fleeing, similar to the travel and torso killings. Arrest and Charges On May 22, 1980, Cottingham picked up 18-year-old Leslie Ann O'Dell, who was soliciting on the corner of Lexington Avenue and 25th Street. At some point she agreed to have sex with him for $100. Around dawn, they checked into the same Hasbrook Heights Quality Inn where he had, 18 days earlier, left Valerie Street's body, her hands tightly handcuffed behind her back, under a bed, where she was discovered by a housekeeper. Cottingham offered to give the girl a massage and she rolled over onto her stomach. Straddling her back, he drew a knife and put it to her throat as he snapped a pair of handcuffs on her wrists. He began torturing her, nearly biting off one of her nipples. She later testified that he said, You have to take it. The other girls did, You have to take it too. You're a whore and you have to be punished. Odell's muffled cries of pain became so loud that the motel staff, already spooked by the murder 18 days earlier, called police and then rushed to the room demanding that Cottingham open the door. Cottingham was apprehended in the hallway by arriving police officers. When arrested, he had handcuffs, a leather gag, two slave collars, a switchblade knife, replica pistols, and a stockpile of prescription pills. The charges listed in Cottingham's New Jersey indictment included kidnapping, attempted murder, aggravated assault, aggravated assault with deadly weapon, aggravated sexual assault while armed, aggravated sexual assault while armed, aggravated sexual assault while armed, possession of a weapon, possession of controlled dangerous substances secobarbital, amobarbital and diazepam. In April 1978, after his wife had initiated divorce proceedings, he kept a locked room in a basement apartment of the house in which they lived in Lodi. New Jersey. Following his 1980 arrest, police found, in the locked room and in the trunk of his car, personal effects which they traced to two of his victims. Trials During the early 1980s, Cottingham was convicted of five murders, in two separate New Jersey murder trials in 1981 and 1982, and in a single trial in New York City in 1984 for three murders. He pleaded innocent and, for the next 30 years, insisted he was being framed, until admitting in 2009 that he had actually perpetrated the murders he was accused of. Cottingham was apparently forensically aware and, in the 13-year period during which he is known to have committed 11 murders, in the pre-DNA era, only one fingerprint belonging to him was ever recovered from the ratchet mechanism of handcuffs left behind on Valerie Street. A case based on his signature pattern was built against him, combined with the testimony of four surviving victims, as well as pieces of his victim's jewelry and other items found in his possession after his arrest. In 2010 he pleaded guilty to the 1967 murder of Nancy Vogel. In 2021, he pleaded guilty to the 1974 kidnapping, raping and drowning of Lorraine Marie Kelly and Mary Ann Pryor. 
He also confessed to three murders of New Jersey school girls in 1968-1969 in return for immunity from prosecution. In 2022, he was arraigned from his hospital bed for the 1968 murder of Diane Cusick. The link was found through DNA evidence, authorities believe it to be, thus far, the oldest criminal case to be prosecuted by DNA evidence.